Hi Shiloh Shepherd Breeders, this is Rebecca Betterbread and I'm here to do your test breeding between Nova and Echo's Big League Firestorm. So here I went up to dog search and I'm going to search for Nova. Up's going to pop a list of dogs with Nova in it and here she is, your Shiloh Shepherd. When I click on her, that'll take me to her public profile page. This page can be shared with anybody on or off Betterbred. It has her general information, sire, dam, date of birth, and down here is her genetic information. Her DLA types are the most common for your breed. Her IR is greater than breed average, which is negative 05. Her outlier index as compared to breed average is lower than breed average. And you guys as a breed have a higher than breed average OI, um, a higher breed average OI than a lot of breeds because you've done a good job keeping your genetics dispersed. Uh, AGR of Nova is higher than your breed average of, which is 0.02, which is how related your dog is to, or bitch, is to the other dogs in the Better Bread database. Now, something I should note right now before I move on is that you guys are in phase two, and this may change a lot over time as more dogs are sampled. So a lot of these genetics, if we find more STRs and, and alleles at all of the locuses, these numbers may change over time. Up here at the top, genetic analysis goes through all of that information in more detail and explains them and gives advice for how to how to use them for breeding. So if you're unfamiliar with IR, OI, and AGR, those terms will be better explained in the genetic analysis. Genetic relationships compares your dog to every bitch and, and, and potential stud that are public within the database. It'll usually pull up or it will pull up sire and dam if they've been tested and siblings and things like that. Uh, you can use this for a variety of planning purposes and breeding strategies that are a little too in-depth for this video but are interesting to talk about. Potential breedings and suggested breeding. Suggestion breedings are based on zoo management programs. If your dog is different genetically, atypical for your for your uh, your breed. The suggested breedings will be based on how to maintain those atypical genetics. If your dog is more typical for your for your breed, it'll be the same as your potential breedings list. So I'm going to click on the potential breedings and this will pull up all the public dogs that are in the database that Nova could be bred to. Here at the top it's color coded 1 to 10. This is how genetically related um, your dog is to other dogs. So we generally recommend breedings that are 6 to 10 because once you get below that, your dog is more likely to be more related to the other, other dogs and therefore your IR of your litter will go higher. Um, but 6 to 10 is what we recommend. And I just did a category 6 breeding. Here's the list of sires. Uh, the first three measurements here are the sires measurements, and this last reading here, genetic relatedness is how closely related this the stud is to your bitch. So the, it's ranked based on the genetic relatedness. Keep in mind that the OI of the stud is important. So let's find Echo's Big League Firestorm. There he is. As you guys noted, it's a category six breeding and we're wondering what my thoughts were on it. So we're going to go over that in just a moment. Now, when you want to do a test breeding, you push this make puppies buttons. It'll say making puppies, please wait. It'll take a while because it's making 500 simulated puppies. Once it's done and I've already run this analysis, you can click on analysis or summary and that will take you to those various pages. I like to do summary. The difference between summary and analysis is the analysis explains what all those different measurements mean and give a little bit different information. It'll show you at each um, STR if it's likely to be a heterozygous or homozygous, um, and it gives you the chances for that. But I like the summary page, and that's what I generally show people. So let's go over to the summary. Here are the values for the siren dam, and then it goes down to the puppies. <clears throat> Uh, Echo's Big League Firestorm has a greater outlier index than is breed average, and Nova is below breed average. So when you look at your puppies, they fall, yay, above breed average, and so that's something we would recommend. Um, now there'll be a range, and we'll see that lower, but as, in terms of the average, I like that this is above breed average. AGR uh, tells you how related a dog is in general to all the other dogs in the d database. You want to go for a lower AGR. Uh, but we can't do it for puppies yet. So 
what I tell people is you want to look at the outlier index because they are in inversely correlated. So when your outlier index gets higher, your AGR will get lower. So we can kind of get at AGR by looking at our OI. And why is OI important? It helps us redistribute our genetics. So if you have very uncommon or neutral alleles, those need to be distributed evenly within the breed versus a bit more typical for your breed genetics. So that's why we want to have to keep going for a higher OI. And as our breeds change, uh, as we redistribute our genetics, OI average for the breed will change. It will get higher. Okay, so internal relatedness of this breeding. It's about at breed average, which is below zero already, so that's pretty good. That means that the majority of your dogs are not homozygous, they're outbred, they're heterozygous. So you guys have been doing a good job making sure you're not inbreeding your dogs. Um, you don't have a lot of uncommon, your, your breed is bottlenecked from what we've sampled thus far, but you're doing a good job making sure you're dispersing what you have. Um, both uh, Echo, Spig Leaks, Firestorm, and Nova are a little bit higher than breed average, but then your puppies end up being more outbred. Homozygosity by locus is another measurement like IR. It tells you how homozygous essentially a dog is. Here, uh, both Echo and Nova are fairly homozygous, but they are not much worse than breed average. So these are just different measurements for how homozygous and heterozygous a dog is. They're different calculations. Okay, percent of the breed unrelated. We can't do that for puppies yet. It's like AGR. Um, and then you get infrequent, neutral, and highly frequent alleles. It's important to look at these. We want to make sure that we we would like to increase neutral and infrequent and decrease highly frequent. Down here to the DLA types, this is the aspect of this breeding I don't like. All four puppies will have the same DLA type, and it's the most common DLA type for the breed. Now, it's not the most important thing to consider, but you guys don't have a ton of DLA haplotypes in your population, so you want to try to increase the, the ones that are uncommon if you're able to or in order to maintain them. And hopefully as your breed is sampled more, we will find more. Here is my favorite part of the summer. The summary page is the graphs that show you where puppies will fall. Um, depending on how closely related, these ranges generally can be closer or they can be higher. So because this is category six, you do have puppies that are falling in the IR into the higher IR ranges, but not a terrible amount. So here's your zero. I usually recommend breedings at, at average or below of zero. So a lot of the puppies will fall below that. You could get some that are higher. In your outlier index, we saw that the average is 0.44, but you see there's a really a pretty big range. And a good amount of the puppies will fall below breed average in terms of their, their OI. Now, in terms of whether or not I would recommend this breeding or what I think, it really depends on what you're going for with the temperament structure the pedigree, what's behind it, do they complement each other, you need to know your risks and pedigree because your IR could get kind of high in puppies and your OI is getting kind of low here. So it's not a bad breeding, I don't think. It just depends on what you're wanting to do um, with and where you're wanting to go with your male and female. So, um, okay, so where else can we get this information? You can go up to my litters and click on that and it'll show you any litters that you've run. Here you can only see Echo's Big Leap Firestorm with Nova. And uh, here's one thing I wanted to point out. So I've only run this breeding a thousand times, but you guys have also been running the breeding. So when you go to the summary page, it's the summary for 3,000 puppies because you guys have been running the breeding. However, on my page is showing how many times I've run it. So you can see that there's a difference and this can give you some respect for why it would be good to maybe run more puppies is that the average OI changed as we as we ran more simulated puppies and also possibly the ranges would change. Uh, usually I've I've run um, I've run full litters and my puppies have always fallen within these rain these predicted ranges though uh, It's still good to run it a few times so you can see if these numbers change So you can see here kind of a summary a very very short summary of your litters that you run So if you run several you can go to the my litters page and kind of compare between them So okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you